Hi, I'm Mashina Ramadan from Jerusalem. Hi, this is Iman Bilbaisi from Gaza. Hi, I'm Ala Khayyu from Jerusalem. Hi, I'm Farah Abu Qasim living in Gaza. Hi, this is Diana Zir from Ramallah. My name is Nagam Mhanna. I live in Gaza. أعزائي المستمعين نقدم لكم نشرة الأخبار. I am Yara Lamla. I'm living in Ramallah. So I'm in the old city of Nablus and I'm supposed to meet uh, a friend of mine, Muhammad Ayash, who's an uh, activist in the area. So. How are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Good, good. Very well. Are you eating kaffa? Uh, yeah, of course, for sure. You know, Nablus it's famous by this kind of typical sweet, so we have yeah. to. Do you want to try it? Mm -hmm. Okay, some? Later, okay later. so let's go. Let's go. Shukran. So, generally speaking, how old is uh, the old city of Nablus? Uh, yeah. it's, the city itself, it's like a Canaanese city, you know, yeah. it's ancient one part. Been demolished and rebuilt and demolished and rebuilt for a long yeah. time. Yes. And now, right now, most of these architects that you see, it's yeah. uh, a Turkish one. Yeah, and I some can, of it, I it's can Canaanese. Tell. It's very yeah. Turkish. It's like yeah, if you see the buildings. Yeah. This one is one of the oldest mosques in Nablus, which is called the Nasser Mosque. It's like an Uthmanic, yeah, an Uthmanic building. You can see. And this is one of the oldest uh, clock towers in Nablus, too, which is nearly 500 years ago and it's still working and function, functioning until now, which is like amazing one. But yeah. well, I, mean, I mean, the main reason for Israelis to destroy the city at that time, for the big invasion in 2002 yeah. April, was three reasons. The first one was to destroy the history of the city, you know, Nablus, it's like an historical city. The second yeah. reason is to destroy the economy of Nablus, because Nablus considered as the economic capital for West Bank. And the, yeah, and the third reason was, you know, Nablus, it's uh, one of the resistance city where most of the fighters and the leaders for all the brigades, they used to be here and for the Palestinian parts, of course, like Fatah and Hamas, they used to be from Nablus. And this is the main three reasons for destroying Nablus, actually. You know, going to back to the economical uh, thing, I remember before the, before the Antifada of 2000, the Lux Antifada in 2000, I remember Nablus was like the center of shopping. We yes, used to yes, come sure. and buy our clothes and everything. Yeah, yeah. From I, I mean, I mean, everybody but not wants anymore. To, yeah, I mean. well, the, the people before the youth, whatever, like anyone do want to do like business, used to come and do it in Nablus. And Nablus known about the business. It's famous by the factories, especially olive oil factories, the clothes, the shoes, mm, so you know, sweets. Well. Yeah, all, all these kind of shops. Yeah. It's famous by Nablus, famous by it, you know. But during the invasion in 2002, they sit around Nablus. They close nowadays, they destroy the economy of Nablus. And this is why most of the businessmen and the factories and everybody, the combines moved from here to outside the, the, the city. Like, yeah. for example, Ramallah, Beit Lahim, Jericho, whatever. And they're trying right now to make the economical uh, capital for West Bank. It's Ramallah right now. Yes. And this is why, you know, Nablus being destroyed. So this is why now why Nablus being destroyed. Sorry, I've been saying half for everybody. <laughs> it's okay. But it's okay, yeah, you have to get used to it. And this is why they destroy the city, you know. So. I mean, mostly the army, when they attack the city, they used to destroy the shops, the factories. This is what they used to do, but uh, after that, some of the, you know, I mean, the, the, the leader of Israel, you know, they've been talking about Nablus on the news, like mostly about the economy and about the resistance and about the history, you know, because Nablus, it's a mixed community between Christian and Muslim and Judaism. Yes, Judaism course. is the Samaritan and yeah, you know like they live Samaritan here yeah. in, uh, in previous episodes. Yes, yeah, so. so they live here since ages too yeah. and they live inside the old city and they have a neighborhood and this is yeah. why they want to destroy the Nablus because the Nablus is yeah because yeah. Nablus it's like a good example for people to live together. Sorry, to live together, yeah for sure. Yeah. And this is one of the main reasons for them to destroy the city. Okay. So um, let's walking? walk from here.
can see here the differences of that ceiling where there is no bullet holes. And over here, there is the bullet holes. Which is yeah, in the building by the possibility of numbers over here. But this one, you can see the bullet holes still over here. These are from the invasion 2002 airport. Where Israeli army, when they invade the city, the Israeli, the Israeli uh, uh, soldiers were actually yeah, in the old city, inside. Yeah, they saw the old city for nearly two weeks and a half. How come they didn't get lost? They lost actually, and there is big, big rumor talk about like, the pro, you know, the maps yeah. for the main entrances and the city and Nablus from the Ottomanic Empire, you know, so the ones, they got, it, these, they got these maps from the Turkish government just to find the location and the main entrances of the city Hi. here to get like inside the old city and because yeah. you know at that time it was different and you know Nablus basically it was at that time set around by nearly yes. 15 checkpoints of course five settlements and three military bases and when they invade Nablus they invaded the yes for sure and Jerusalem and, and Ibal mountain and yeah so they, they were like and yeah, they basically tried to destroy the city and this is why Bullet holes on the windows of that buildings oh my God. from the Israeli invasion too, which means that they used to shoot and fire everywhere on the civilian houses, and some people been killed inside their houses by live ammunition from the Israeli soldiers and the snipers. And at that time, oh. of course, they didn't allow for any person to be inside the old city or outside the old city because I was at that time, you know, working with international. But uh, I mean, I saw the roads are very narrow, and yeah. if somebody gets shot inside the house, yep. How would the ambulance come in and, no, and get them? No, they are them? not allowed to get in. We, this is why we established three uh, three hospitals, three clinics, you know, inside the yeah, old city. Yeah, mobile clinics. Yeah, mobile. Yeah. Not mobile, like uh, set up one, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, like three of them, one in the middle and one at the end and one in the beginning. But they were do like weak surgeries and first aid. And this is why most of the people at that time who was killed or who was shot by the Israeli army, they lost their life because of the bleedings. You know, they were bleeding for a long time and nobody can do it. And even international, they are not allowed to help. Palestinian medical teams, they are not yes. allowed to help. And even the Israeli, uh, the, sorry, the, 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 the journalists at that time, they were not here. And if you know, like, if you remember at that time, uh, and the same day invade Nablus, they invade the old city of, uh, of the, when they invade Janine, sorry, they invade Nablus too. And this is why they were like, you know, no news about Nablus. Everybody was talking about Janine at that time. Yes, but the, it was the same yes, day. the Janine refugee yes, camp, of yes. course. And they didn't know about now what's going on in Nablus. And this is why everybody was at that time, you know. And I do remember that at that time, what, what we, uh, what, uh, that was in 2004. 2002, no, 2002, April. 2002. I remember even the phones uh, were they cut were like, off. Get off yeah. I was couldn't call any friends from Ramallah. Uh, nobody, from, uh, nobody. From Nablus even the local TV station, the radio stations, and uh, the cell phones, internet, everything was cut off and nothing can work. You know, this is one of the oldest sub as, I, as back to the economical situation and yeah. as I told you before, this is one of the oldest uh, uh, so all of oil sub being attacked by the Israeli army and demolished and this now it's a so plug. Yeah. And it's been now plugged and nobody doing businesses anymore here you know, because they destroyed the economy. And if you wanted to build or renew this this sub uh, factory, it needs lots of money, you know? And the people cannot offer to but remove even it. a market, is there a market for it? Like, uh, there is, can they export the soap outside they can. of Palestine? And there is actually some of these factories do that, but not anymore because people cannot offer, you know, for 10 years being sit around and the closure, and you just spend the money all the time. So you cannot offer even to renew the house or to renew yeah. your business. So this is why they cannot do it. Uh, as you see, everywhere you look here, there is uh, memorials for martyrs. Like this one is a local for for the first martyr in Nablus who was killed during this intifada. Yeah, martyr Pien. Osama Jawab. Yeah, yeah, Osama Jawab. And over here, you can see three memorials for martyrs. Over here, there is one more. And one over here. Over there, there is another like three memorials. Everywhere you look, you find like memorials. And these are actually used to be here. Some houses being demolished by the Israeli army. If you look, for example, over here, you can see the demolishing of the top of that, of that buildings, you know. Which is mean they destroy, and this is one of the olive oil sub factory too, being demolished by the Israeli oh, army. bullets inside of it yes, as well. Yes, and there is bullets on the holes, which is mean the Israelis. And I'll tell you one of the stores over here, yeah. which is one of the sad stories happening in the old city of Nablus, which been, uh, which was happened by the Israeli army in 2002 April. Of course, this is one of the memorials for one of the 
said stories happen in Nablus, which is a Shabbat family. As you see, the right here, I will never forget memory of the Israeli invasion, the massacre committed by the Israeli army in April 2002. Eight members from the family, uh, from the same family, being killed by the Israeli army. This is yes, wow. this is their house, were being demolished by the Israeli army on the top of the families without awareness the family that we're gonna attack the city from here were demolished by you know launching rockets from the sky bomb the house and then right they here. killed them. this house yeah here. I, and I can tell it's totally new yeah, and they, they, totally they renovated just, they just and the one renewed. next to it yeah, as yeah, well and this one they renew it just like a month ago they, they finish it you know and you can see the house how new is it and the old, the old stones over here and the new stones over here which was like by the Israeli army and this is eight members from the same family. And why did they target this house? Because they, they didn't get in from the main entrances. They were so scared to get in from the old city, you okay. know, to the old city from the main entrances, from the fighters. So the attacks from the houses, to destroy the houses and then allow their tanks and their vehicles to get in. To the is that Ibal's mountain Yeah, right this there? is Ibal mountain. From here you can see one of the Israeli military bases where they're located on the top of that mountain. You can see oh, it from right here there. actually clearly, yeah. Well, now this, you know, because it's between two mountains, it's like in a valley. And they, this is why they're located on the top of the mountain, Abel and Jerzim, where they have two military bases. This is one of them on the top of that mountain. You can see it clearly. Yeah. And during the invasion, Taban, they helped by the invade Nablus from that, the, from that mountain and that mountain too, where they put snipers and they used to fire on the old city, where everything used to move, they used to shot it. Oh, okay. Yeah. We see the bullets. Those are old bullets? Yeah. All these are bullets because the Israeli army, when they invade, Too much. it's not much. It's, uh, this is nothing actually. After the renew, you know, after the invasion in 2002 April, if you saw Nablus, you don't think, you don't, you will never believe that there is some people still alive. It was nearly demolished totally. Everywhere you can see demolition bullets, bombs, yeah. everywhere in Nablus because army they attack from one of these main entrances to the old city, which is from here. Take you to the east side of Nablus. Uh, on the way to the Najah University from this way. This is why you can see the bullets because some fighters used to be hiding inside the old city from here and there. They have a clash with the Israelis and this is why you can see everywhere there is bullets. Yeah, everywhere on the buildings. <coughs> I can see on top of this store, yeah. right here on this building, on that building. It's everywhere. Muhammad, uh, how is your wife Alex? She's good. She's now, right now actually in Cyprus. She's trying to go to Gaza. By this she's out of the country? Yeah. She's been denied since 2006. She's not allowed to be back here. She's been, she's been denied uh, entry for five years now. Yes. Wow. And she's not allowed to come back again because the accusation for sure it was like security oh threat. Hello, hello, keep it hal. How will be? Okay. So, and she's uh, pretty British, you know. She's not like an Arabic British or whatever, you know. So, but she's uh, British British and she's been denied since that time. Uh, so I she mean, haven't seen you for for about five years now. Yes. W why is she like? Why is she not allowed to come into the country? They said security threat, but the first time they said it was like because we got married. She got married with a Palestinian guy, of course, you know, and especially a refugee from Balata refugee camp. And yeah, and you're an activist. <coughs> yeah, and an activist, you know. So these are the main reason, of course, uh, what I know. But what they said is she's a security threat, and the second time they said because we don't have kids. Third time they said she's a security threat, and the fourth time uh, they said that she was illegal here in Palestine for the first and second the time. Did Alex try to come into different uh, entrances? Yeah, like she tried the bridge. She tried the bridge, she the, tried the, bridge the Olympic bridge, and she's been denied. She tried the uh, airport, and she's been denied too. What about after uh, renovating, uh, renewing her passport? They refused her, of course. They still have the same, you know, they take your eye prints and your fingerprints. Whoa. So they know everything basically. And you yeah. mentioned her coming to Gaza. How, how would she come to Gaza? She's gonna try to go uh, with the boats that they are trying to go now to probe the closures of Gaza right now. Because she tried the first time in 2009. Which is the name of the boat? Uh, Russia Kuri. Oh, it's Rachel Kuri's yeah. boat. And the first one when she was there in 2009, when she tried to go there, it was uh, the humanity, the humanity spirit which was by, uh, organized by some activists over there and she was denied. Yeni, when would she arrive to Gaza? I think, I think uh, even uh, Friday or Saturday. And it uh, depends. That's, that's an illegal way, of course, of arriving Yeah, well, Israeli consider it illegal, but as a Palestinian, it was not. It's over here. And it's over here, actually, too. Yeah. 
is Monty. So this is Alex. We will use the opportunity and say salute to Alex and... Uh, and I love her so much. <laughs> and hopefully you'll be able to come back. Inshallah. Hopefully. I hope so. God bless you both. Thank you. Yeah, but it's not me just the only one in this case, you know. There is 55,000 Palestinian person in the same situation, which is mean all of them, they have the same situation. So yeah, this is actually a place which is a spice factory for brick uh, family, and it's like one of the oldest uh, you know, uh, spice factory. Okay. I'm gonna show you some stuff like, which means used by the Israeli army. These are some of the bullets or rockets, small rockets used being Oh, those are used, rockets? Yeah, from the Israeli tanks. This was since 1948. One of the Palestinian artists in Nablus make it as a vaza. And this is like since 2002 April. You can see the differences. Over here you can see it's 75 millimeter, 1943. Okay. Over here. And this one is 75 millimeter, 1943. But this one shot on 2003, uh, 2002 April. And this one 1948 during the Nakba time. Which is me. It just looks like a very big bullet. Yeah. These are like uh, shot it from the tanks. Which is the Israeli tanks, the big one. Or at some shot time, by tanks. yeah, and some of them like this kind. There is similar one, similar to this one. They shoot it from the helicopter, like the Apache. Yeah. It's like more longer. It's around 50 or 60 centimeter. Yeah. Same size of this one. So these and are. And they like shoot it at what? At, at houses. At the houses, at the people, everywhere. Does it demolish a house? Can it uh, demolish not demolishing the whole house, but it could demolish a part of the house, and it could kill between it's five. Right? Yes, it could kill between ten to uh, 20 person this one the shrapnel of the bullets it's like yeah it would be like that size till here the bullets it's like the, the small bullet but it's bigger like that size would be till here mm -hmm. and these bullets over here it could kill like between 10 to 20 person from the shrapnel the shrapnel would be like the small bullets of the, the M mk or six m16 bullets wow yeah Sorry? This is sesame. Yeah, this is sesame. This is sesame. Sesame. This is very food. Basim, you're the owner of the house. Yes, the owner of the house. How many years are you here? We're here since the 90s. Yeah, so he's, uh, he's owning this place since the 90s. But in the middle of the year, since 1930. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. But they're in this business, and the business of spices since uh, 1936. But it's a lot of money. 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 For the Intifada, they used to send spices and uh, herbs and stuff like that to different Palestinian cities like Jaffa and now, uh, Ramallah and different cities. And now, after the economic crisis and after the Intifada, did you get rid of it? No, it's hard. Everything was lost. It was a war in the other countries. It was a war in the other countries. It was a war in the other countries. Yeah, he says because of the, of the occupation and the closure <laughs> and the, <laughs> the economical <laughs> situation after the second intifada in 2000 and uh, the invasion of Nablus, it was hard for them to uh, export those uh, spices and, and herbs and or even send them even to Palestinian cities. So I asked him how old is this building and he said uh, 380 years. Wow. I think it used to be like an olive oil factory, but then they. Hold this is an olive oil. It used to be an olive oil factory. This used to be a soap factory, olive oil soap factory. 
And then they change it to make it like as a spice factory. Over here, this is a part of the old city still. This place used to be the oldest sub factory in Nablus, which has been demolished by the Israeli army. All of it was demolished. Yeah, all this quarter used to be like the olive oil sub factory in Nablus, the oldest one, being demolished by yeah, the Israeli we can army. see from there that it was connected. Yeah, it's been demolished by the F 16 missiles at that time. Wow, and they, they moved all the stones. All the stones from here to outside the city. And this is the church for the Anglican, I think. And a part of it was destroyed like that way you can see the stones have been repaired there and this way still like you can see over here. Which is mean the Israeli army when they do their missions, they don't care about religion issues or about the holy places. They destroy whatever. today at the Afaluna Society for Deaf Children. Uh, I'm going to show you something very special. Uh, I have good memories with this place, especially when I bought uh, my gifts for my host family when I went to the USA and they loved it so much. Uh, the amazing part and the, the part that I'm sure that you will like, uh, after you know uh, all these crafts and all these embroidery stuff that you'll see, who makes them, you'll be surprised and very happy to see it. Let's see them. Um, this is Ibrahim Teddy. He's responsible for the craft shop, right? Yes. Right. Uh, are you going to show me around? Then we're going to show them who makes this stuff. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Uh, so basically, you're going to show me around the place. Feel free. Okay. هذا المعرض زي ما حكينا كل المنتجات اللي بتنشغل في المكان هذا موجود هان اللي بيشتغل الشغلات هذه عبارة عن اشخاص صم حرف متنوعة زي ما احنا شايفين ترجم ترجم بس ترجم He's saying that uh, all the stuff that we're going to be seeing here in the showroom, uh, they're, uh, they're done by uh, deaf uh, children yes. children Okay. Uh, or guys maybe Ah, any adults, uh, children yeah. to adults. Uh, so, most of it, there's, it's basically embroidery and wooden work. Wooden work and ceramic works. And ceramic. So, uh, ceramic. Uh, resim, resim, uh, 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 resim, handmade. Yes, we have resim handmade. We have ceramic and resim. We have a lot كمان في عنا شغل التطريز والخياطة مع بعض مش بس تطريز الفينش تاع القطعة كلها. Okay. So basically here, uh, or what they do is embroidery and wooden work, all these tables and the things we're gonna see here, it's handmade here in the center and the ceramics. And the coloring and the drawing here is also handmade by them. And also the finishing of the embroidery, they don't send out the, their materials to be finished in somewhere else. No, they, f uh, they, f they make the finishing here at the center. Mm -hmm. I noticed something. These are made by you, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me how I knew, but these are made by you, right? Yes. Okay, so basically you're the one who does the designs for them and they work upon it? Uh, mm. Oh, so it's not only you? Uh, not just one person. Okay. احنا فريق تصميم احنا كمان مشركين الصوم في ناس مبدعين وعندهم افكار جديده. Oh, okay. اكيد هذول بندمجهم في شغل التصميم. في ليدر. اوكي. الكلام هذا على اساس ما يكون في ليدر بوجههم اللي هو انا. 
Okay, so I ask because I know uh, I've seen pictures that he's the one who made these ones. Uh, <laughs> he's the one who made these ones. Um, so I ask if he's the one who makes the designs for them and they work up on it. He said that uh, there's uh, a team who uh, who sets like a plan for them to work on, but he's the leader who uh, who follows up with them, right? But but there is uh, but there is uh, some of uh, the people who work. They're really creative and they have their own ideas. Yeah. Something like this. Mm. Uh, this was suggested by one of uh, the children. Embroidery. Okay. Uh, all the themes and designs of embroidery mm. uh, and uh, color suggestions uh, is done uh, by them. Yes. Okay. He's the, uh, the sign language translator here at the center. Okay. He's going to help us, but first of all, the Ktalimni, I wish I could. I'm not sure. I wish the Ktalimni. Okay, first of all, he's going to teach me something to use it with, uh, with people. I'm going to teach you something to use it with people. I'm going to teach you something to use it with people. How are you? Yeah. Okay. Ish, Ismat. Lahza. Ish, Ismat. Ish, oh. Ismat. Ismat, what's your name? Lahza. Ish, Ismat. Okay. Ish, I'm going to work. Ish, I'm going to work. Okay. Where do you work? Okay. I'm going to work. Okay. I'm going to work. Okay. Hi. How are you? Okay. Lahza. إيش اسمك؟ what you work؟ إيش تشتغل؟ right؟ okay. good enough. I'm ready. I'm ready. okay. okay. now we're gonna see the people who work everything up there. Ibrahim just directs them and they work. right؟ you do a lot of work, but they are the ones who work. okay. لا راح نقابل حدا من الشباب الصوم اكيد حنقابل محمود محمود شخص اصام محمود محمود بيشتغل عندنا في قسم التاهيل المهني في وحده المنجره هي وركس ات ذا كاربنتر هير طبعا هو نجار بيشتغل في المكان هذا محمود بدا في المدرسه كتلميذ في مدرسة أطفالنا بالصوم. He started here at the center when he was at the school. At the school at the center. كان عمره ثمان سنوات أول ما بدأ في المدرسة. When he was when he first was eight years old. إجهان على المكان هذا كبداية كان عمره اثنا عشر سنة. أي مكان؟ إجهان كقسم التأهيل المهني. When he started coming here, he was twelve years old. طبعا اول شيء بدات بدايته يعني كتدريب على شغل الخشب بتعلم تقنيات شغل الخشب ومارس الشيء هذا كمهنه في المكان هذا من عمر 12 سنه من عمر 12 سنه كانت البدايه طبعا اكيد كان شغله بدائي وشغلات بسيطه طبعا تدرب تدرب على المدرب هاشم برضه شخص اصام هو استاذ نجاره okay. Uh, when he first started here, he started uh, being trained uh, and uh, about all the technical parts and the mechanism of working and uh, of uh, getting things done like this. Uh, he was trained by someone whose name is Hashim, who also was uh, a deaf, deaf uh, person. <laughs> ممكن نحكي آخر أخباره خطب وتجوز محمود يعني أو أوكي صار شاب مركن على حاله وكمل حياته أوكي His latest news that Ibrahim that Mahmoud he got engaged and he's married now because he can work now and provide his family طبعا هلا هم هون they get paid صح صحيح. They get paid. صحيح. Okay. Uh, all, all the people who works here, uh, they, they do get paid uh, from here.
هو كثير بكون مبسوط هان يعني في في المكان هذا لانه مش مضطر ولكن بالعكس بلاقي نفسه هان في اي مكان ثاني فيش في حد يتواصل معه فبتلاقيه يعني بكون متضايق كثير كثير من الاماكن الثانيه اللي فيش فيها لغه اشاره لكن بالعكس المكان هذا كثير مبسوط يعني بشعر فيه بسعاده Okay, he enjoys being here because uh, here he finds people to communicate with, especially because he can find people uh, who speaks uh, the sign language and other uh, other places he can't communicate with people. Uh, he can't communicate with people, uh, but here he finds himself very very welcomed and adapted by the place since they speak with him. sign language, but اه في المجتمع الخارجي هو في عيلته برضه ما فيش ناس بتعرف كثير لغه اشاره اها ولكن آه هان عندنا هان في المكان هذا اللي انا بشتغل فيه كثير في ناس بتعرف لغه اشاره آه حتى كان حتى لو طلع برا ممكن يلاقي مثلا خاصه في العيله ممكن تكون بتعرف شويه لغه اشاره ولكن مش زي ما بكون هان داخل جديد ابطال الصوم كثير ناس بتعرف اشاره هي هذه اللغة لغتنا الأساسية هذه اللي نتعامل فيها ولكن برا ما في حد كثير بيعرف لغة الإشارة. Okay, here it is. Uh, he says that uh, he finds some difficulty outside of the center since not many people around him uh, around him uh, they do speak the sign language, uh, especially in his family and the, his surrounded community. They, there's no in, uh, there's no many people who speaks uh, who can do the the sign language. Uh, مرته صماء بتعرف لغة الإشارة. هو كان يرفض انه يتجوز واحدة ما عم تسمع لأنه مش كثير حيكون في اتصال كامل معها ولا هو فضل واحدة صماء حتى يكون في اتصال كامل يعني من خلال لغة الإشارة مع بعض. And his wife is also she's deaf. Uh, he was rejecting getting married to uh, a girl who can hear because he believes that there, there will be no communication between him and her. Uh, it would be way better uh, if you got uh, married to uh, to a woman who's uh, who's deaf and speaks the sign language as well as him. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Shukran. Shukran. Shukran.